let's jump straight into it. To integrate Wavid based processing into your server, you need to consider the following steps. Wavid denoising. If Wavid denoise is true, you can apply Wavid based denoising to the data. Wavid transform. This will allow you to transform the signal using Wavids. The kind of transformation depends on the value of the Wavid transform parameter. Wavid decomposition levels. This indicates the level of decomposition. The following modifications to your code will integrate Wavid processing. Um, right, let's start integrating this. And uh, no suggestions from GitHub. For the Wavid denoising, the universal threshold is used here. 0 0.5 asterisk NP, SQRT, 2 asterisk NP.log, then EG underscore data. This is just one of many thresholding techniques you can use for denoising. You might want to adjust this or offer multiple options. And um, this should be fine. The wave that used for decomposition, wave that transform, is directly obtained from the client request. You should ensure that this is a valid wave that type supported by PYWT, e.g., DB1, DB2, R, etc. Uh, this sounds legit. What else while well, it's generating? The level parameter is also directly obtained from the client request. Again, you should ensure that this is a valid value. Too large a value might result in an error or undesired behavior. If you wish to use wavelet coefficients for other analyses or visualizations, you can extend the code accordingly. The above example just applies to noising. Yeah, we also have the outputs. Make sure it's the correct uh, um, ID. Yes. Right, so want to do some error checking first. Absolutely. Validating the input is crucial. You can achieve this by checking if the provided wavelet transform is in the list of wavelets supported by PYWT. If it's not, you can send an appropriate error response to the client. Let's pop this uh, before here yeah, somewhere. Okay, we do get an error. Uh, this is not the type of error I was expecting. Do we get it even if I remove this? And uh, no. Uh, okay, can we print out this list? Why copilot doesn't want to work? Is it doing something? Ah, right. So you can just do that, can you? Right, this is the list. Okay, we need to adjust this drop down. Do they actually have names? And uh, let's pop it back into GPT. The list you provided appears to be the wavelet name supported by PYWT, and the log entry suggests that a request was made with an unsupported wavelet transform value, UWT. Yeah, are any of them legit? Uh, no. Given this, it seems that the validation code is working correctly. When provided with an unsupported wavelet, UWT, the server responded with a 400 bad request. Yeah, that's if fine. If you're looking to improve the error message for the client, you might want to include the list of valid wavelets in your error response. Oh, but how do we play this HTML bit? Can we update this? Wait a second, so those actually... So those should be correct responses, isn't it? Uh, DWT? Uh, no, we want to update this with the valid wavelet wavelets. Need to clear that. Uh, run this. This at the valid wavelets. Shall you understand the context? Okay, updating the the value, this value. It's not a valid value. Or is it okay? Okay, let's try this. This should be updated. It's not giving an error now. Okay, we might add more 
later. Should go to bed now. Because we'll forget later, won't we? Okay, give me. TB3 Yeah, there's Casino of them Okay, let's just add four It uh, should be enough Okay, you know what to do, don't you? Is that same two? Yes enough a buy orthogonal come on github copilot <laughs> why aren't you doing it by yourself shouldn't be hard should it is this ah there is no 1.2 so thank you for that one point, yeah, there's 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.3, 1 1.5, and 2.2. Uh, okay, we'll leave it that for now. Oops. Yeah, this. We need another input for uh, let me check. Yeah, let's make uh, this one default in a HTML. Hey, how do we do this? B four. No. Come on. Give me something. Yeah, GitHub Copilot. Cyber, I don't know how to use it. Or it's absolutely hopeless. Uh, one sec, what are we doing? I missed this one. Uh, well, having a problem. Can we make default option? Can't spell. Yeah, GitHub Copilot can learn from ChatGPT how to modify code. Yeah, I just need to add the word selected there. Right, so now we have DB1 as default. Now, obviously this should change the signal. Okay, this stopped working. Okay, what's up? I think I had this error before. How to fix. Can you fix this? The message indicates that the variable eg underscore data is being used before it had been assigned any value. Why am yeah, uh, and save this file as well. What was the uh, last change? So this line is a, is doing what? Is attempting to pass eg underscore data to the pywt wave deck function, but eg underscore data hasn't been defined yet in the current scope. This is the cause of the unbound local error. To fix this issue, you need to ensure that eg underscore data is defined and initialized with the appropriate data before the line of code mentioned above. 
Yeah, what what do I have to do? Check the context. Review the code in your get underscore data function and see where eg underscore data is supposed to be initialized. It might be possible that under certain conditions or input parameters, the initialization is being skipped, leading to the error. So line 87, it's not indicating any problem. Let's just restart the thing. Okay, it's working okay. When I hit wave let the noise, okay, I get this error only when uh, selecting wavelet the noise is on and this is the error can you give me a more specific answer yeah if i've let the noise is over there what's the problem ensure consistency if eg underscore data is initialized in the else block or outside the wavelet the noise condition then you need to ensure it is initialized within the wavelet the noise condition too uh, yeah, it doesn't have an else function. Let me try a copilot that's doing something. Right. Let's do some manual what printing coefficients. Why? Not sure. Ensure consistency. If eg underscore data is initialized in the else block or outside the wave at the noise condition, then you need to ensure it is initialized within the wave at the noise condition too. Uh, okay, error handling is good. It's also a good practice to add error handling mechanisms. For example, before you try to use eg underscore data, you can check if it's none or not initialized and handle the error appropriately, rather than allowing the application to crash. Logging. Add logging statements to your function. This will allow you to trace the flow of your program and see which branches of your conditional logic are being executed, and the values of key variables. Okay, let's do some more um, error handling. Okay, so instead of... Oops. Okay. Right. This would catch the unbound local error and return a meaningful error message to the user. Okay, now the app is having an error. Don't have else uh, yet. Okay, so this is running okay. Why is this not sending this? Uh, uh, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? If we let noise. Let's just be reverse multi level discrete wavelet transform. Uh, yeah, this doesn't make any sense. Now to fix the code. Sorry, no super long prompt. I'll probably get a timeout soon, but I'm just trying to understand what's going on. EG underscore data variable is used to decompose the EEG data into wavelet coefficients. However, you're reconstructing eg underscore data from codes and then immediately decomposing it again. This doesn't make sense and is the main reason for your error. You should first obtain eg underscore data from your segment and then perform wavelet denoising if the option is enabled. Eg underscore data should be initialized before checking for the wavelet denoising operation or after extracting the segment from the dataset. Uh, okay. So we have the... Uh, we have this... Right, so this should come first. Yeah, don't want any comments like that do because it's obvious that that's a continuation of the code where is if do we have if the trend we do okay now i'm really confused yeah that's just checking for nance so we should go eg data and the trend if necessary then removing check check for nance and then while the denoising rest of the code. Okay, let's try this. It's restarting the thing. Let's refresh. This is working. Okay, that's working. And it's actually doing something. So it's removing some uh, noise. This is actually only useful up to a very limited point uh, let's reduce the window size yeah so you can see the noise reduction there so yeah ChatGPT 4 this uh, does know know something about the eg it's the, the particularly noisy channel 
this is the trending uh, this filter oh there's only yeah we need to restructure the whole thing we could actually just uh, okay let's try this again uh, so on the larger screen ideally everything will be set from left left to right on a smaller screen on a tablet or phone yeah it's obviously will have to go uh, top to bottom but uh, otherwise it's actually working it's actually doing something useful uh, so next thing will be patching it up a bit and publishing on the side so it will go instead of um, this one here we'll probably put it up top there so it will eventually look at least as good as this one if not a uh, much should be much better so hopefully you'll be able to test it yourself yes this levels in html should be limited levels value should have a min and max like that it equal well would zero just be the same as uh, having it uh, off yeah let's make it five and default about two Yeah, there's not much uh, difference between the uh, different wavelet types now the other thing is uh, when i change yet yeah, the frequency spectrum is updating as well is good yeah it's changing by by the roll yeah the question is this is working now if no errors now that the immediate issue is resolved i would recommend periodically reviewing and refactoring the code for performance maintainability and readability moreover always consider adding more comprehensive error handling and logging mechanisms to make it easier to diagnose and fix potential issues in the future the effect of the noising is not very clear let's see what it says maybe definitely knows where way more than than i do denoising using wavelets can be subtle or pronounced depending on the nature of the noise in the signal and the parameters used in the denoising process if the effect of denoising is not as clear as you'd like you might consider adjusting some parameters or trying other techniques to enhance the results here are some suggestions to potentially improve the denoising effect adjust thresholding the thresholding step is critical in wavelet denoising you're currently using a universal threshold you might consider adjusting the threshold value or trying other thresholding methods such as the soft or hard thresholding provided by pywt okay Wait, that looks sounds very interesting can you give me the details certainly the thresholding method you use in wavelet denoising can significantly affect the results the method you're currently using is known as the universal threshold adjusting it or using other methods can give different results here are some ways to play around with the thresholding you can adjust the multiplier currently 0 0.5 in the formula to see if a different value gives better results should i have it as an input the pywt threshold function has a mode argument that allows you to choose between soft thresholding default and hard thresholding soft thresholding shrinks coefficients that are smaller than the threshold towards zero while hard thresholding sets coefficients smaller than the threshold to zero another commonly used threshold especially for signals with gaussian white noise is the minimax threshold this threshold can be estimated as sure shrink is a method that aims to minimize mean squared error mse it involves a bit more computation, but can sometimes give better results than the universal threshold, especially for signals with non-Gaussian noise. Bayes shrink is another adaptive thresholding method that's based on a Bayesian framework. The main idea is to estimate the threshold based on the variances of the signal and noise. 
It requires additional computation but can be more robust in certain situations. It's often beneficial to experiment with different thresholds and thresholding methods to find what works best for your specific dataset and application. Visualizing and comparing the denoised signals with different thresholds can be very useful. Also, remember that it's not always about achieving the cleanest signal, but rather preserving the important features of the signal while reducing the noise. Wow, oh, you're so smart. So yeah, let's add the multiplier. Yeah, we might continue this next time, but yes, we made quite a bit of progress that the noising actually works. Uh, I assume this number should be uh, between 0 and 1. Yeah, GitHub compiles as 1 or 2, but uh, yeah, it's definitely the original thing was 0.5, so 